Hi guys, this is Silent from the Indigo Company, Entropy Division, and today we are taking out the German Reserve planes, the HE-51 series. The key with these planes is that they are turn fighters in the, at their core. Their top speed is low at 322 kilometers an hour. Their armament is mediocre with 230, with 230 caliber machine guns, and their maneuverability is quite good with a turn time of 14.3 seconds. The ammunition load we're going to be running with these aircraft is the tracer loadout because it's made up entirely of armor-piercing tracer rounds, which are the best the HE-51 can get given that it has no API anywhere. API is armor-piercing incendiary, and it's great because it'll both puncture fuel tanks and light them on fire, and a fuel fire is death to most planes. Anyway... So with that loadout, we're going to go into this match, and the first thing we're going to do is we're going to get as much altitude as we can, because whoever, most engagements are start, are, are, bleh, are won and lost before they begin in earnest. Before a maneuver is pulled, before a shot is fired, the engagement's outcome is already decided, because somebody came into it with better positioning, more energy, and more speed. And that's what's going to make the difference. So we're going to pull up and get altitude immediately. And then we're going to choose our targets. Now we could go for ground targets, but that's not a good early game decision. While well, there's still a lot of players in the match and a lot of planes in the air. That's more of a late game thing, because there are fewer things on your tail trying to kill you. In the early game, what you want to be worrying about is getting the advantage on some on some other fighter. And the way you do that is altitude and planning. You don't dive for the heart of the swarm. The swarm then just comes in on you and you become the center of the world's most painful game of duck, 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 goose. So what you do is we look for a target who's kind of broken off from the main element of enemy fighters. This F2A is a good candidate, except he's already being swarmed by our team. And in the low tiers especially, you don't want to get mixed up in that because you're likely to get shot down by your own team as your opponents because, because there's very little incentive to not cause friendly fire incidents or to not even just run into another plane. So what you want to do is kind of fly around at the sides looking for targets. And that guy's going to loop around behind us. He's in his I-15, so he's quite dangerous. We may or may not be able to turn with him. Because the Russians are a little bit overpowered at tier, at, at, at below tiers, I ha kind of have to agree. Because there's nothing I can do in my HE-51 to out fight this guy, except for have him fly straight in front of me while I unload my ammunition into him. I'll take that any day of the week. I just don't expect it. So our new target is Paul McKinsey. Paul, if you're watching this, I'm sorry. This is going to hurt you more than me. Alright, notice how our ammo load is below half. Especially in this plane, you want to reload now. Like everything, you don't want to have to do things on your opponent's terms, and that includes reloading. Always go into engagements with a full stock of ammo. Th that can be the difference. It's things like that that'll get you. You'll have the enemy all lined up, you'll, pull, you'll, you'll squeeze the trigger, and your guns will go click instead of bang, and it's the most disheartening feeling ever. So we're going to just kind of do this little circle around. We're going to pick a new target. There's this Flarp Stormhawk. He's flying a Fury. He's above us. And that's sort of posing an issue, but he's diving right now, so he's expending all of his energy, so I'm not going to feel so timid about engaging him because he's really bleeding a lot of energy because biplanes don't retain energy well in a dive because of their extremely high drag due to all of this webbing and the fact that they have two wings. They're just not aerodynamic planes, so they do not retain that speed that they gain very well at all. So what we're going to do is we're going to pick one of these three targets and engage him. Probably the Fury. Yep, definitely the Fury. Because he is behaving for us. Oh, the I-15 got him. 
I-15 has got amazing guns. It's an amazing plane with an amazing ammo load. It's got a lot of the API that I was talking about earlier on board, which is what makes it so deadly. It's very likely to start fires, which are death sentences to biplanes. So, we're getting into this fight with this HE-51. He can't really man outmaneuver anyone at this point. And that's called going heads up. You see how we were going head on with each other? That's how you lose planes. Because you should just flip a coin. You should flip two coins. Flip the first one to see if anyone lives, and then flip the next one to see whether or not it's you or your opponent that lives. So, it's not really a good idea, especially once repair costs start becoming an issue. But, at this tier, I mean, it's annoying. It, mostly the reason not to do it is because it's not fun to lose your plane because you smacked into another plane. It's fun to lose your plane after shooting down another plane. Anyway, so what we're going to do now is we're going to just continue engaging lone targets who we know we can outmaneuver. This Nimrod is a prime candidate for this. Because he's pretty much all alone, except for the I-15, who doesn't seem to be interested. That's one of the most painful things in War Thunder, right there, is when you do a lot of damage to a guy and he get and, and he gets the, and somebody else gets the kill. It's always frustrating, but you know what? It's give and take. You'll do it to other people. You shouldn't. If you know somebody's going down, don't take their kill. But I mean, when when a big team of people gets on one guy's tail, it's anyone's game, really. Ah, man. That uh, stinks. Oh well. We'll do it again. We are losing. So, yeah, the HE-51 is not my personal best or favorite aircraft, though some people can do very well in it. I do well in it when I'm not in the actual reserve matches, when instead I've paired it with something like the um, CR-42. Because that gets it in that little bit of higher tier where there's more monoplanes which aren't as maneuverable as it. And that's when it can really become deadly is when people are still trying to turn fight. Because trying to turn fight a biplane is a death sentence. You, you, you can't shake them off your tail. Because they just have amazing turn times. The best thing to do if you're a monoplane and you've got a biplane on your tail is just fly in a straight line, fly in a straight line, fly in a straight line. Because his guns aren't that powerful and you will outrun him. It's that simple. Anyway, it has been a great match. Once again, I'm Silent from the Indigo Company Entropy Division, and it has been a great match. Signing off.